What's up everybody, Jared back once again, and in this video we're going to show you how to root your brand new Google LG Nexus 4. So if you're brand new to rooting, this is going to be a really great method for you to sort of familiarize yourself with rooting, as well as it'll load um, some extra files in your computer that you're going to need for maybe possibly future devices, although you won't be using this particular toolkit for those future devices, let's just get that out of the way right now, but there's going to be some um, files like SD, Android SDK, things like that, that may not make a lot of sense to you now. Don't worry, in time, when you flash a bunch of ROMs down the road, you'll understand what all of this does. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, uh, look in the description or about section of the video below here, and there'll be a link to this page here. This will take you to XDA Developers. For those of you that are unfamiliar with XDA Developers, it's actually basically, well, let's put it this way, the world's number one one-stop shop for all of your uh, phone hacking needs, whatever phone you have but it's primarily Android because it's the most fun to hack. Anyways, um, our good friend and super, super recognized developer, very talented guy, Mskip right here, uh, does often um, create these toolkits for us and they're quite easy to use, although they're very, very powerful toolkits and they can look a little bit daunting, a little bit intimidating for a beginner or novice router, as it were. Um, but we're actually going to make this, it's, it's actually a very, very simple toolkit because it does pretty much everything for you. And I'm going to take this simple toolkit and make it even more simple or simpler, I guess one, yeah, yeah, um, for you guys to root your device, okay? So take a deep breath. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we actually do get started, you can hold your breath for now. Um, with every routing job you do on any device, there's always a very, very small uh, possibility that you could completely break your phone and have yourself an expensive electronic paperweight that won't even turn on. That probably won't happen. That's like one in a hundred thousand to a million. It almost never, 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 never happens. In fact, if you read through the entire forum, this entire thread, you won't hear or read anybody having any problems. And Mskip himself is very, very helpful. So if, you know, shit hits the fan, as it were, uh, leave a comment in this thread, sign up, create an account, leave a comment in this thread. Somebody will help you. If not, Mskip will help you. But the community is actually usually pretty good about um, helping their own. So don't worry about that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you can, you know, take another deep breath. Um, oh, also, if you do break your phone, I'm not responsible for it. You're taking the step here. Oh, and it'll void your warranty. And this method that we're going to do is going to wipe your device completely clean. So if you want any photos to be backed up, music, movies, whatever, back them up now before we do this because I've really simplified this method. And by simplifying it, I'm basically completely getting rid of you backing up every, anything. So that's on your own. Okay. Anyways. Uh, you'll be, so this is the top of the thread. You scroll down just a little bit and you'll notice this um, writing here in big bold letters. You're going to go ahead and click on that. Once you click on it, it will download this particular file right here. Now, wherever it is, just go ahead and what you're going to do is go into your, uh, like my computer as it were. Now, this method is only available for Windows PCs, be it Windows 7 or Windows 8. I'm running Windows 8. So I have my... Um, operating system on my C drive. Most of you will too. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and you'll notice that I've actually created, if I can actually go into this a little bit more for you guys, sorry about that. You'll notice I've actually also created a folder called Google Nexus 4 Toolkit. Now the reason I did that is because as we start installing this um, program, this toolkit, it's going to ask you to do that anyway, so you may as well do it now. This is, as I said before, in the root of your C drive, okay? So this is, you know, you got your program files and everything like that. Just create a new folder and leave it there. And and grab that file, um, this executable toolkit file, and just drag and drop it into this folder here. Once you do that, go ahead and double click on it. The next window you'll be presented with is this one here. Just go ahead and click next. That just basically tells you what the program does for you. Um, as you can see here, it's again, like I mentioned before, it's actually asking you to um, create a folder and install a file in there. So that's what we've done. We're going to go ahead and click next there. And the next folder you'll see is this one. It's asking you which components do you want to install in your uh, computer? You're just going to leave both of them checked. Make things nice and easy, right? So um, as you can see, it's going to say, you know, basically confirming, yes, I want to install these folders, or I'm sorry, those files into this particular folder. We'll click next again. And boom, it's installing and it's done. The next one, and you'll also notice that a, um, a bunch of uh, files popped up here. This is where all the important files are going to be. Um, don't uninstall this toolkit as long as you have your Nexus 4, okay? Um, because this is actually, this has things like a, uh, ADB, 
which is an important file, as Android SDK, which is also an important file, and so on, as well as a Fastboot Toolkit. You'll understand what all this stuff means as time goes on, so don't worry. So this is the next page. Now you'll see that, okay, all these things have been installed properly. Let's go ahead and execute the program now. As soon as I click close, this window will pop up. So I'm going to zoom out so that you guys can see it a little bit better. I'll go ahead and see if I can fit it all in the frame here, just like so. And it's saying I'm starting ADB. Now it's going to say, do you want to check if an update is available? Well, this is the latest version, which is version, uh, I believe it was 1.3. Okay. Um, at the moment, at the time of me recording this video, which is on the 13th of February, 2013, um, there is no newer ones. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could always donate to this guy. And if you donate to him, um, this will all update automatically as future toolkit comes out. But for all intents and purposes, what we're about to do here today is probably the last time you'll need to use the toolkit. So I'm going to go ahead and select no and just type in no, <laughs> nice and simple and uh, hit enter. Then it's going to say what build you have. Now, typically speaking, uh, most of the Nexus 4s that are arriving at people's houses these days are already coming with Android 4.2.1. Uh, back when he built this, it was only coming with um, Android 4.2. But don't worry, we're going to select number one anyway. So just hit one and hit enter, which will bring you into the toolkit. Now, before we can do anything, we need to install the driver. So how do we install these special drivers that can communicate between our computer and our phone? Well, first thing you're going to want to do, and I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see what we're going to do on our phone here. And I'm going to turn this on so I know I can get an idea of where the focus is. There we go. So your phone's turned on. Go ahead and pull down your notification tray and get into your settings, okay? Once you're in settings, go on down to about phone. Scroll all the way down and check where it says build number there. Just go ahead and tap on that. Oh, come on, focus. I just really want to get this going here. There we go. You're going to want to tap on that a bunch of times. As you start tapping on it, a message will pop up there saying, you know, tap a couple more times for a developer or whatever. Once you tap it enough times, it'll say congratulations, congratulations, I'm sorry, you're a developer. Go ahead and click the back button. You'll now be greeted with developer options, which is right above it. Go ahead and check that. And you'll notice in developer options that it should be by default turned to on but USB debugging, debugging mode won't be checked. So go ahead and check that. And this is what will happen, blah, 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 blah. Just click OK. And now we've got USB debugging mode turned on. For future reference, for those of you that are new to rooting, every single Android device in the world, if you're going to root it, you have to always make sure that USB debugging is checked before you start any process, OK? All right, now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and power our device off, OK? So we'll shut that off. We'll give this just a minute to do its thing. It's vibrated, very lovely. And we're gonna put this into something called fast boot mode, okay? A lot of devices use fast boot mode to help communicate between the computer and your phone. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and press both the up and volume down, uh, the volume up and down keys, and the power button at the same time, and you'll see what happens. And you're gonna go ahead and press and hold them until you hear a little, uh, you feel a little vibrate, and this screen pops on. Uh-oh, what did I do here? Oh, shit. There we go. Okay. So that is the screen you'll be greeted with. Now, what you're going to do then is go ahead and plug your phone into your PC like so. Now your phone's going to make some noises. It's going to download some drivers and stuff like that. So just give it a moment to do its thing on your computer. You don't want to start having it uh, confusing itself while trying to install drivers from the toolkit versus the drivers that are already being installed from your device to your computer. So just give it a moment here and we'll, uh, we'll come back as soon as that's done dicking around on your computer. All right, so now that your computer's done installing, it's sort of, I guess you could say, let's just say for simplicity, they're temporary drivers, and it stopped making noises, ba-doom, ba -doom, you know, those noises, you know what I'm talking about. All right, we're going to go ahead and zoom in here, I'll refocus it, and um, now what we're going to be needing to pay attention to is fast boot mode. Now, it's going to say here, list of devices attached. We obviously don't have anything yet because we haven't actually installed the drivers that we need yet. So what we're going to do is you'll notice we have um, selection one is install slash uninstall Google Nexus 4 drivers on your PC. Now, just so you can get a look into the future, you can see all these different types of options which do a whole bunch of things. Like I mentioned, this is a very powerful program that allows you to do many, many different things. But to keep things real, real bare bones, simple for you guys, because all you really need to do is have the device bootloader unlocked 
and root it and install BusyBox and a custom recovery so you can get on your way, okay? So we're gonna be using one and eight, but for starters, we wanna install those drivers. So you go ahead and click one and hit enter. The next screen you'll be greeted with is basically asking you what operating system you have. Now you no you'll notice that, um, yes, if you do have Windows XP or Vista, you can use this, although you probably shouldn't have either of those operating systems by now. Um, Windows, so I'm running Windows 7. So I'm gonna go ahead and select number two and I'm gonna hit enter. The next one is, you know, do you want to install the drivers or uninstall them? Now, if you run into any problems down the road for whatever reason, like I have the past four or five takes, go ahead and just click number two and you can go ahead and follow the instructions and it'll uninstall all those drivers for you. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and install the drivers. So we press one and enter. And if it says, uh, uh, sorry, it says, if you get a message saying Windows cannot verify the publisher, then select start, blah, 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 blah. Now, the thing is, you'll notice here, it says the, lo the resource loader cache doesn't have loaded MUI entry. Don't freak out. You'll also notice here, there's another message that says, if you get the message, the resource loader cache doesn't have loaded um, MUI entry during the installation process. Don't worry, the drivers w um, have been actually installed. So it's instructing you to unplug the USB cable from your device, reboot your PC, and then plug uh, your cable back in. It's also saying to make sure that you have USB debugging mode um, turned on, which we know we have turned on. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna go ahead and press any key to continue, right, without unplugging my device, okay? You'll notice that we actually already have this um, device serial number here. That's your device's serial number, which means that is actually your device. This toolkit has picked it up. If it's picked it up, that means that you don't need to reboot your device. Or I'm sorry, reboot your computer, okay? Just, just leave everything plugged in as it is right now. So it's all, the drivers have been installed. Everything's good to go, okay? Now what we're gonna do is go to number eight. So type in eight, because that is the one click for all. Boom, hit that. And um, go ahead and take a moment to read that. Now you've got two different options to um, install a uh, super user. Super user is basically what basically gives your device root in layman's terms. Um, I prefer super SU by Chainfire. In my opinion, in my personal opinion, he's a better developer and I trust his software a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose selection number two and hit enter. Okay, so now we're at the spot or the uh, point in time where we get to select a custom recovery option. Now you've got Clockwork Mod Touch Recovery, which is done by a guy by the name of Koosh, who's a very talented developer, and his, uh, his, his custom recoveries are rock solid. TWRP Touch Recovery is my personal favorite, but I happen to know that the latest version of TWRP is actually 2.4.1, depending on the device you have, but either way, it's 2.4 across the board for all devices at the moment. Now, by installing the older version, you're gonna eventually have to install the newer version anyways, so, um, and, and if you install the older version, it can start creating weird partition folders uh, on your device. This is something that I think mSkip actually needs to update and I'm a little bit surprised at this point in time he hasn't done that. Now Clockwork Mod Touch Recovery um, is very simple to install so what we're going to do is install Clockwork Mod Touch Recovery and then down the road if you wanted to you can go ahead and install um, TWRP by downloading Goo Manager from the Play Store once you reboot your device and you can install the latest TWRP recovery from there. Trust me you're going to love TWRP recovery or again if you want to you can always stick with clockwork but anyways I'm talking too much let's go ahead and press one we're gonna hit enter alrighty so it's time to unlock our bootloader because without unlocking our bootloader we can't root our device we're gonna go ahead and type in yes now um, it says here um, to be ready to press volume up when it tells you to on the screen um, and then press the power button to select it and unlock your bootloader so get ready to do that so we're gonna go ahead and hit enter pay attention to your phone here as you can see here it's saying to um, unlock bootloader, press yes. Now you're gonna be using your volume key as the thing that navigates up and down. So we're gonna go ahead and go like that. Press the power button, which is basically like your enter button and boop. And now things are happening. So uh, as you can see, it says lock state unlocked. Now looking back on the toolkit here, if I can just maybe, I don't know if it's in, is it in, is it in the shot? Yeah, it's totally in the shot. So uh, it's rebooting, finished total time, <laughs> 0.001 seconds. 
Um, procedure will continue in 30 seconds. So give it some time. It's just doing its thing. Um, so just chill out. You'll notice on your device as well that, um, oh, okay, well, there is a little Android guy with a spinning thing and there is a thing going across. So just chill out and wait for your uh, device to reboot. Also, while it's doing this whole process, don't do anything on your computer, like, you know, checking your emails or starting up other programs. You don't want to screw anything up at this point. All right, now your device has been rebooted. You still have the toolkit open. You still have it plugged into your computer and chances are you've had a little window pop up, uh, pop up on your computer basically as like an attached device. Um, so you can just close that little tiny window down but just keep everything else open. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on with the setup wizard. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, access my internet. <laughs> That's my network. So give me a moment while I type in my password and all that stuff. All right, so it's connecting to the internet. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and let it walk through the whole process. I, I probably could have skipped that. I'm, I'm gonna select no, not now. And we'll skip through there. And we'll skip through here. And we'll go ahead and skip through there, click finish. Okay, now what we need to do to complete this process, go back into settings, just like we did before. And you're going to go right back down to About Phone. You'll notice that um, Developer Options is now missing. Oh, where did that go? Well, remember how I told you to get back to Developer Options. Go ahead down to your build number in About Phone and tap that a bunch of times. Three, two, one. And I'm now a developer, even though I'm actually not and have no idea what I'm doing. Developer Options. Go ahead and click on that. And of course, it's uh, Developer Options is enabled. And we're going to check D, uh, USB debugging and select OK. Now your phone will continue the process. So we'll go ahead and jump back to our toolkit. You notice here that it says continuing in 10 seconds because it was waiting for me to um, enable USB debugging again. Now it says rebooting back into fast boot mode. So what it's gonna do is actually reboot my phone. Boop, there it goes. And it's gonna reboot it back into fast boot mode just like we were before. So what it's currently doing right now, or what it just did, was actually flash what's called an insecure boot image. And that is basically what allows your phone to be rooted. So we're not done yet. Um, while this is doing its process, your computer will have started to make some different noises like it's disconnecting and reconnecting the device. That window that your um, device has been connected to your computer will have probably popped up. Just leave everything alone. This will walk you through everything until it finally says you're completely done. So we'll, we'll get there in just a moment. As you can see, it's renaming the, rest uh, the uh, restore recovery files for you. Um, it's on to step four now, installing BusyBox on your device, which is what allows um, things like titanium backup and things to back up your applications to access root. So here we are again, um, everything's still happening. It's still taking its time. We're only on step four right now. So again, your computer is going to still be making noises. Make sure you don't do anything. So you can see, congratulations, you hacked it. Uh, finished total time, but we're still not done yet. You can still see that little command still flashing down there. Your device is now rebooting, as you can see, but we still want to leave it alone okay now we're finally back at the main menu which means guess what congratulations you now have a rooted device now to make 100 percent sure you have a rooted device um what i'm going to do is show you guys a neat little trick well it's not really a trick i guess but i'll go ahead and put this back in focus here for us and i'm going to go ahead and pop that baby open and we've got uh, um, our wi-fi ready to go and i'm going to go ahead and go into the play store now because i don't have any account set up i'm going to set up an account really really quickly all right, so I've set up the um, Google account. Now what we're gonna do, like I mentioned before, go into the Play Store, go into the search thing and type in root checker, all right? So then it'll come up with a couple of options. Um, I prefer the one from Joey Krim, as you can see there, Joey Krim. Go ahead and install that and click accept download. Wait for that to download. I'm gonna go ahead and click open. Disclaimer, yada, 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 just click I agree and just click okay. And then this is where the moment of truth comes in. Verify root access, grant it. Generally when it says grant it, that means you already have root. And as you can see, congratulations, this device is rooted. So um, you're rooted, have fun guys. Anyways guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did and you found it useful and helpful and you managed to root your device with no problems, um, show me some love by hitting that likes button down below. And if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing for more videos like this one in the future, although it probably won't be rooting the Nexus 4 again. It'll most likely be custom ROMs for the Nexus 4 as well as other reviews. We have uh, videos every Monday and Thursday, um, best useful Android apps of the week on Monday and best uh, Android games of the week on Thursday as well as a bunch of product reviews in between. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Um, congratulations, you've now got a brand new rooted uh, LG Nexus 4. Bye-bye.